Hey, we all love a good book. And what I want to share with you today is the number one most influential book that I have read and put into practice day to day when I am living and working and surviving with my kids. Welcome to Diligent Dad. My name is Andrew. It's my mission to support you in your early steps of fatherhood. Hit subscribe and the bell icon. And you'll be notified when I'm dropping new videos twice a week. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is the number one book that I have read since I've become a dad, which has most influenced my practice. It is called The Happiest Toddler on the Block, written by Dr. Harvey Karp, who I referenced in significantly in my video on getting my newborn to go to sleep, the fourth, fourth trimester. And Harvey Karp coined this term, the fourth trimester. To, talk about how that first 12 weeks in the baby's life we've got to treat it almost as if it's still in the womb and try and recreate those conditions so i really regard dr harvey karp's work uh, in the highest esteem and i really really like this book so i thoroughly commend it to you get yourself out there get a copy and get it read because for me this the the ideas he suggests in here are some of the best that i've seen and i think they're highly um highly practical uh, very useful, able to put into practice, and, and they're extremely, extremely well informed, well thought out, uh, and usable for every dad like yourself and me. What I want to talk to you about today is some of those, uh, the, the most influential and most beneficial ideas from the book that I took. So firstly then, a, a lot of bringing up toddlers is encouraging them to be able to express themselves. Because I think a lot of the frustration that I see in my toddler has come whenever he's been unable to put into words or he's not had the words or not been able to express the words for the emotions that he's feeling at the time. So if we can give, okay, the words will come, obviously, hopefully, assuming they're healthy kids, but the words will come, but they won't come quick enough to keep up with what the child wants to say so maybe the child's one and a half getting on towards two they might know what they want but they might just not be able to put it into words so what we can do dr harvey Carp recommends this is we can teach them the sign language so that uh, they have because they understand what they want to say and they understand the action so we can teach them the things that uh, and what things mean so we can hold our hand to our mouth for eating we can suck on our fist for drinking. And as long as whenever we're doing that in front of our kids, whenever they're super young, eating or drinking, and they say the words and the action, we're giving them those tools to um, be able to express themselves. And the more they can express themselves and tell us what they want, the less frustrated they're likely to be, and the less um, tantrums that are likely to develop because they're able to express themselves and they're not having to, they're not struggling with uh, being able to communicate with us and to tell us what they want, which so often is a problem, okay? Other big one being, you're tired, okay. You wanna sleep, let's sleep, okay, let's sleep. So this is all about giving them the tools before they've actually managed to say the words, giving them the tools to be able to express themselves. Second to that then, Dr. Harvey Karp is very, very good at coining his own um, expressions to explain techniques or skills that he, he wants us to employ as parents. And the second one that he talks about is the fast food rule. And why he calls what, he, what this is, is basically that the most upset person, normally your toddler or your child, gets to express themselves first. So if your child is out losing it, they're the ones that get the space to be able to express themselves and, and explain what they want. And the reason Dr. Harvey Carp calls this the fast food rule is because when you go up to the window at McDonald's and you, you're the one that's upset because you're the one that's hungry, you say what you want. The next thing that the cashier says is they pay it back to you. So you say, I want a hamburger. They say, you want a hamburger to confirm your order. Well, we employ that same tactic and technique with our young children, where they say, I'm annoyed because Ben pushed me. We play it back to them. You're annoyed because Ben pushed you. And instantly we've we we've played that back to them. They know we understand them. We've confirmed what the problem is. And then we can take steps 
to fix it. But the main point is that the child feels understood, they feel listened to, and they feel valued. And if we can do that, we're well over halfway to winning the battle. And finally, the, the last thing that Harvey talks about in his book is just the understanding and appreciating that, uh, and this is something that maybe in your dialogue with your partner might come up, is that every stage that that child goes through is a phase. That child is going to change so much from day to day to week to month to year, okay? And everything that happens physically and mentally, emotionally is a phase. And yes, okay, if, if there's something dramatically going wrong, you need to go to the doctor and get it looked at, you do that, of course. But within a broad set of brackets, everything that happens is just a phase. The child will go through it. Um, I hear parents worried that their child is like not using a knife and fork when they're two and a half, or even though they've been told a thousand times, use your knife and fork. And my attitude to that is when the child's 15, He's going to be using his knife and fork. Don't worry about that. When the child's 15, he's very likely not to be wet in the bed. So we, if they're still doing these things at two, two and a half, three, we don't really need to worry about it. It's not worth our energy. We, we have much better things to put our brain power and our, our, our thought into than worrying about stuff, which the child will just phase through so many stages in their life. Um, and our love and our nurturing and the nurturing of our, our extended family and good friends will make sure that that child eventually sells on um, behaviors which are socially acceptable and which largely fit our expectations, particularly if we've created a, a really healthy uh, relationship with those children that child is going to change so dynamically and so much through the years of its life. We should expect that change and be comfortable with it. And don't worry about it if the child changes one way a bit quicker than the other or slower than, than the other. That change will come. The child will do it at its own speed. And that's absolutely fine and normal. And every child does that to varying degrees. So I hope that's useful. Again, Dr. Harvey Carp, the happiest toddler on the block. I thoroughly recommend it. Great read. Um, get yourself a copy and get through it. Uh, it's uh, a really excellent read, especially as you're if you're just setting off on, on your uh, on if your kids are just setting off towards toddlerhood and those tough tough years of the child just finding out what the world's all about. <music> I hope that's been useful. You've been watching Diligent Dad. I'm Andrew. Hit subscribe and the bell icon. You'll be notified when I'm dropping new videos twice a week. Thanks a lot for watching, Dad, and see you again soon.